Hi everybody, good day to you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whichever one of those applies to you at this current point in time. Uh, this is a 1998 Ford Expedition and the brakes are grinding. They're grinding bad. Well, it seems that I've made a major error uh, regarding my recording action. The issue is, is uh, it's the next day and I went to continue this and I don't seem to have uh, any of the stuff that I shot yesterday. So we're just gonna have to start over. Uh, grinding brakes on the expedition. Uh, what I have found here is, well, I found a foggy lens is what I found. I'm just, uh, I suck at my job today. Okay, let's try again. What I found is that the rear brakes are in excellent condition. We're looking at about eight millimeters rear pad thickness right here. Uh, might be a little bit of noise because do you see how that pad is encroaching on that rusted area on the rotor right there? That's potentially a noise maker, but our concern is more of a grinding and brake sticking situation rather than a, a intermittent noise. So let's move on to the front and I'll show you guys what we found up there. The uh, driver's side front, again, we've got the similar situation with all that, uh, all that rust encroaching onto the, the pad area and something similar on the inside we're looking at like two three maybe four millimeter pads up here let's head over to the right front now this one appears to be similar in nature pretty close to metal on metal on the outboard side why look at that inboard side that is metal on metal and look here it's been going on for a while see how thick this side of the rotor is versus the thickness on this side. It's been grinding down for quite some time. And look at all those shavings on that wheel speed sensor. Pretty nasty. So what we've got going on here is a metal to metal right front brake. Now the issue that I have is that these pistons coming out of this caliper, they have come out of their bores and I cannot get them to retract. Uh, because of that, we're going to go ahead and replace this caliper. We're not going to do both, we're just going to do the one. Uh, I don't prefer to do it that way. So what we're going to do here is replace uh, the front pads and rotors. Uh, this should be good because this uh, vehicle is equipped with a spindle, meaning that the bearings are inside of the rotor and not inside of a hub. So we're going to have to repack these, clean them up, re-grease them, and also replace the seals on the inboard side of the new rotors. So uh, let's get this thing disassembled and pulled down, and then we can move on and get it repaired. So stay tuned. This is going to be a very good video. Let's get this thing out of here. Where's that other one? Unclickage. Yeah, let's see if we can get this thing out. It's got this lip on the rotor and that's gonna hang on to those pads since those pistons don't wanna squeeze in very easily. In fact, I can demonstrate such things right now. Try to get behind it. See that? I'm gonna break this in a second. Yeah, it's not going. Not going to happen. More pry bar. Next size up. You're the winner. Let's see here. How am I gonna get behind this? Aha! Come out. I'm here. It's got the uh, when the fingers up here, little tabs that hang on to the bracket, and it's stuck. That piston on the top is getting hung up on a rivet that is on the brake pad. And I cannot get it to compress in enough to let go of the rivet. Wow. zero friction material left. Let's pull this caliper bracket off. Loud noises. Yeah, the leveraged unfix.
Okay, let's lose this rotor, and we will do so by pulling this cap off. If I can get behind it with this little pry driver. Probably not, yeah. I'm actually cheating, this never works out this easily. Usually you're back here with a hammer. Or a big pry bar, or both. Or some Knipexes, or Nipexes, whatever you prefer. I prefer Nipex. Why don't we use powder pins? Defect. Because they break. Hey, does it bother you guys when you see people use uh, adjustable pliers like this? Going the wrong way? Because I'm of the opinion that they should go in that direction, like so. I see folks doing this. It bothers me. I wonder if it bothers you. I mean, just a little bit, not that much. But I am a sensitive creature. All right, that's the outer bearing. It just came out. Watch this, I'm gonna put the, uh, the nut back on because we need to get the inner bearing and the seal out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this bearing, or we're gonna slide this rotor down the spindle, and when that bearing catches the back of this nut, it's gonna pop it out and it's gonna remove the seal from the back of the rotor. Observe. Fail! Ha! All that stuff stayed on the spindle, that's, that's fun. Look at that, I make, a, I make a great demonstration, and physics ruined it for me. can't have anything these days, you know? Well, there's the seal. That wasn't supposed to happen. This was supposed to get caught here and then pop it off. Wipe me down. Get all this nasty out of here. Metal shavings are stuck on everywhere. Oh, cool. Here, we'll force it out of here with a combined effort. Okay, we moved over here to the uh, driver's front. So we repeat, pull the slides out, pull the caliper off. Pull the bearings out, etc., etc., etc. Stay. Everything's a hammer. Gonna work on this side. Nope. Ew, there's rusty dirt on my leg. Oh, that's tight too. Holy smokes! Come on. I'm working too hard for it today. I don't want to do that. It's Friday. Stay. There. Mm -hmm. Let's just 
see about this bearing cap next. You gonna come off? Nope. Time for the Knipex. What are these loud noises I hear? I think they're working on the building. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, maybe I can do the, the rotor bearing trick with this side. I don't know if that's going to work. Let's find out. I think I got the space here. I hope I don't hit you guys in the face with the rotor. Haha, look at that. That's how it's done. That is the way. All right, let's unlubricate the spindle right here. Get all that out of there. Of course, gotta make it nice and shiny. Okay, like I mentioned before, we're not going to replace this caliper. We're only going to do the one on that side. So we can compress the pistons on this side in preparation. Uh, but first, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and clamp off the hose on that side because those pistons are overextended. And when I press these in, there's a chance that the hydraulic pressure can migrate over to the other caliper and then push those pistons out all the way and then they're gonna dump all the fluid on my floor and make a mess and I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and block that off hydraulically right now. Then we don't have to worry about it. Sometimes it's good to be forward thinking. Not all the time, but sometimes. It'll stick that guy right there. A lot of folks will use uh, vice grips and stuff for this. Uh, I don't prefer that method. It's okay, but you have to have the feel for it because vice grips can actually squeeze these too much and damage the hoses, whereas these little the guys right here, those are designed specifically for hoses. And hose click. Okay, let's get these pistons compressed. I know we'll see about those rotors. I don't have enough hose. Here, we'll just have to do it like that. Wait, I've got a better idea. Let's take that bracket off. That way I have more hose. There. Okay, we have achieved maximum hose length now. It makes this a little easier. I don't want to shove any dirt inside of those pistons because we are reusing this old caliper, so I'm just going to give these a good spray. To clean out anything that might be embedded in there. Shiny. caliper is going to have new slide pins but we're reusing these old slide pins on this one so I'm going to pull these out give them a good wipe down and a spray and then re-lubricate them because we don't want one side to have more friction than the other side thus creating an uneven and differential braking force because that would be bad okay so Got our bearings here. Now, although we do not have uh, any rotors, I can still repack these bearings. Now, I do have a bearing packer, but I don't really like to use it. I just like to do this kind of the old school way, so to speak, because I'm an old guy now. So, let me spray this out just a little bit more. It's not exactly necessary, but I've got a little bit of time to kill. Give it a good wipe down. Now, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to go ahead and take some grease, put it in the palm. And we're just going to keep smearing it in under the basket. I'm going to try to rotate it at the same time. Now, there's another method. I showed you guys this before. 
This one's kind of the fun way, but you still have to roll it. Just toss it on in there. Because sometimes we choose violence. But yeah, you just want to palm it, roll it in, and then use your hand to scrape that grease into the basket of the bearing. That way each of the rollers get coated. And for good measure, you can rotate it some and just pack some more in there. You can see why I wear gloves for this. It's kind of ugly, but it's good form. You really, really want to get as much grease packed into these bearings as possible. Yeah, I know, it's a messy bit of business. And you don't have to throw your bearing into the grease bucket, like I said, but it's just fun. That's how I entertain myself. I suppose we can grease the spindles next. That part's really easy. Just take you a bit of, bit of lubricant there and just smear it all on the shaft. There we go. We don't need any like in that area, just on the machine surface. Yeah, a little bit more to the other side. And I'll also put a layer of grease inside of the rotor. That way all the surfaces are highly lubricated. Okay, it seems I still don't have a rotor yet. Been waiting around for it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this caliper off and we're gonna change this out with the replacement. Okay, we've got our nice new shiny right front caliper here. Came with some uh, shims for the bracket. The bracket is included, it's over there on my bench. And I've also got, and this is important, a new set of crush washers. You guys see those? They are copper and they sleeve on the banjo bolt right here. Now this bolt allows fluid to pass through it. See how it's got the hole there and then the hole right there in the center. And as this bolt is inserted through that little mounting block right there, the fluid can come in, it comes through the block, goes through the hole, through the shank, and then into the chamber inside of the caliper. That's how the fluid passes through the actual fastener. So the goal here is to make this a very quick and spill-free transition. So we're going to unbolt this, pull the caliper out, stick the new one in, same position, same orientation, re-bolt it, re-gasket it, and then bolt the new one back on. So here goes nothing. I just don't want to spill a bunch of brake fluid. There. Caliper down. We don't need you. We'll give that a good wipe. See how no fluid came out? It's due to that clamp right there. our clamp anymore. Let's get rid of that. Now I am going to end up doing a full fluid exchange on this after everything's done, but I want to uh, go ahead and open this bleeder valve and gravity bleed this first. Alrighty, the delivery has arrived. We have a one new brake rotor complete with wheel studs ready to have its bearings installed. Okay, so the way we're going to do this, yeah, that's the uh, receiver dryer. It's one unit though, it's all built into that uh, condenser. Anyway, what we're going to do here is we're just going to load some grease up into that, make sure the whole surface inside at least has something of a coating and some little extra just for fun. We're gonna take our bearing. This part's critical. You can't. Uh, you gotta get your bearing in there. 
I've done this myself where I stuck the seal on and forgot the bearings. Then you gotta ruin your seal to do it again. So put your bearing in there. I like to pack a little bit extra in, just let the seal drive it in. Kind of hammer it home, you know? Get that little groove nice and fill it up full of some lubricant. Get rid of the extra. And then we can get our seal. Loud noise. It's a rubber dead blow, I didn't hurt anything. So we wipe her down, flip it up, flip it around, let her down, fill it up. Now this rotor is ready to go back in. All right, rotor's coming in, we're lubricated, we're bearinged, we're sealed. We stick that guy right over the shaft like so. And we gotta hold it here, because if you let it go, it's gonna fall off. It'll hit you in the foot. That'd be bad. So, new bearing going in. It's gonna go. Everything's a hammer. Yeah. Important. Gotta have the washer. Now this washer goes one direction. So when you take it off, don't flip it over, or at least pay attention to the witness marks so you know where it goes. This next step is also critical. We don't tighten these down with an impact gun. I've seen it, it's bad. We do not do that. This is kind of done by hand and by feel. So what we do is we're gonna tighten it up. We're just gonna back it off ever so slightly. So it's just past hand tight. Right about there. You don't want to have play in it, but you don't want these bearings getting pressed by the nut. Then our little locker goes in. Now there's a hole in the top of the spindle, and that is to be referenced with one you know, of these slots. Let me find the right slot here. Nope. Just keep going through them until you find one that works. There you go. And to finalize this operation, we need a new cutter pin or split pin. I know everybody calls them something different. Well, not everybody. I guess both are, are accurate. There we go. Now, toss our cap back on. Linear impact action. A little bit of spray, wash off of our uh, nonsense there. We'll wash off the protective oil on the rotor. Wrong way. I'll get the back side a little bit as well. Nice, shiny. So do you guys remember earlier when I was saying I got some new shims with that other caliper? Well, unfortunately, I did not get a set of shims with the pads, so I only have a set of shims for one bracket. Uh, that being said, I'm not gonna install those. I'm just gonna reuse the old ones. That way they all match. That will have an equal level of non-shiny. And yeah, I can do that. Thing in position here. Stay. So let's go ahead and mount our bracket. Uh-huh. Yep. 
Alrighty, brake pads are going in. They slip into these little channels here. Like so. These ones are not as easy to do. They're not nice. Had them backwards. Everything's a hammer. There, there we go. Let's make sure our hose is not twisted. That is critical. And I believe we're gonna go. It is twisted. What have I done? That goes like that. Which is this one. Yeah, uh, oh, I'm lost now. I got myself in trouble here. No worries, I know what to do. Get in there, Bolt. Get in there. And do we have a twist? No, there's no twist. Get this guy in. Now looky here, got this little tab and that needs to fit up into a groove. So we're gonna put this one in first, get that lined up. Oh, I'm wrong. The groove's on the bottom right here, see that little lip? That one goes in first. Very, very tight squeeze. Oh, I almost forgot this little guy. Click. And repeat on Rotor 2. Bearing. More lubricant. About to get weeby wobbly here. Man. Shiny. Okay, the rotor coming in. Need more lube. I forgot the front race. There we go. No worries. Just shove it in there. New bearing, new lubricated bearing, new Lee lubricated, blah, 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 okay. <laughs> new Lee lubricated, there, words, washers, nuts, words, washers, and nuts, I think that's what I'll call this video, and Nipex click. Right about there. Let's get everything lined up with our hole. That looks good. What the heck's he doing over there? And the cap. Cap click. And a quickie. Okay, caliper bracket time. That's coming in. Oh, hey, what I do with my socket? Got it, 
missed that one, didn't I? Yep, it gives. There we go. And brake pad time. Looks like this one is our inboard. I'm looking down at the old ones and uh, noticing where the tab is, the alignment tab, or the squealer tab, rather. Everything's a hammer. Untwist this caliper hose, there we go. And then we slip this guy into its groove. It's kind of in. Now it's in. Now we need to come in and bleed this. Okay, I got a bucket to catch some fluid. Got a new hose. Okay, new hose coming in. It's gonna go like so. Oh, almost dropped it. loud noises. Click. Okay, let's break the nut loose on the metal line before I unbolt it. Just a little bit. There. Now, the mounts, this is real easy. Let's see, we'll put this one, we'll bolt that one on right there. And then we'll disconnect the line, bolt the bracket on, and then just uh, put the fitting in the new line. Then we can bleed it. See, it's already leaking. It's good. It means we have flow. This part I will do with haste because I don't want to drain a, a bunch of the fluid out. Yeah, that sounded like a dead battery. Maybe you should drive off on a cold start at 6,000 RPM some more to recharge it. What? I said that's a dead battery. Maybe you should drive off it's 6,000 RPMs on a cold start to recharge it. Because your bearings love that. Whoa! Whoa! You guys are nice to each other. Look at that. You believe the way these guys talk to each other? I'm sorry. He doesn't forget. He just. He just he only cares about number one, okay? It's because he's racist. It's because he's racist. Oh, please. This place would run better if nobody worked here. Nobody knows where I'm working right now. Are you you go, go, go send some faxes and order the wrong parts. Get out of here. Go order the wrong parts, dude. Get out of here. What are you doing? The big park there we go, look at that. That's, that's what's up. <laughs> Flowage. Go get some more lunch. Yeah, go, go get lunch again. Get out of here. Cool, we got some drippage going. 
That's better. All right, guys, I've got to grab my fluid flush machine. It's basically just a vacuum, and I'm going to vacuum out all four corners of all the fluid as I add fluid to the reservoir up top. That way I can exchange all the fluid in this truck. Uh, that's going to take me about 40 minutes or so, and I'm not going to record that because it's, it's just kind of boring and loud and tedious, and uh, I don't find that to be very exciting and uh, not really worthwhile. So we're going to skip over that procedure for right now. I'm going to check back in with you guys when the fluid exchange is complete and we're going to head out on the road and uh, take our test drive. So stand by, don't go anywhere. I like making fluid defy gravity. Oh, I'm losing. Yeah, see it, see it running sideways? That's just cool. Let's hit the road and uh, go make sure this thing is operating like it's supposed to be. Starting the engine, pumping up the brakes. We have to pump the brakes because the caliper pistons have been depressed into the caliper body and there is space in between those and the actual pads. So if we don't press those pistons back out till they meet the pads, the first time we go to actually brake, we will have no braking action because all of that pedal effort is gonna be used on actually moving those pistons back out until they contact. So we gotta pump these up a couple times just to make sure. Beginning safety click now. Get in there. All right, let's get out of here. How are we looking back there? Safe, safe, safe. Yeah, it's looking good. Two honks for safety. Okay, well it stops. That's a bonus. I don't hear the grinding sound. Also good. Okay. Got to tell you, I was surprised to see this truck being a 1998. This thing has been around for a while. And look at that, nearly 300,000 miles. Nearly. It's actually impressive. All right, let's get some speed going here and we'll initiate our first stop. What I was looking for was the wheel to favor one side or the other. I was a little concerned about a, a brake bias issue between the left and the right because we do have one new caliper and one uh, uh, previously used caliper and oftentimes they can uh, apply different amounts of clamping force just because of differences and uh, I was glad that it didn't do that. And here we go. I'm not going to do any braking right now because there's cars behind me. Alright, no one is behind us. Let's do a quick brake event. We're gonna watch that wheel and make sure it doesn't uh, wanna jerk off to the left or the right. Here comes the pedal. Applied. Nice. Smooth straight line braking, that's good. Let's, let's stop a little harder. Hard stop, hard stop. Beautiful. All right guys, just a few more stops to go and uh, I can go ahead and call this one good. I'm gonna head back to the shop and get it parked because I am out of here. It's time to start the weekend and now the real work starts. I'm landscaping. And when I mean landscaping, I'm talking about like with heavy equipment landscape. Got some big projects coming up. It's at home projects. I don't think I'm gonna do videos on it because that's like my house and, and I can't really tell you guys where I live. That would be bad for me. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop rambling right now and uh, bring this video to conclusion. And I will do that by thanking each and every one of you for watching my video. I wanna let you know that I appreciate you being here, especially since you are here all the way to the end. Since you are here all the way to the end, I'm going to go ahead and assume that uh, you enjoyed this video. And uh, seeing as how I'm fairly confident that my assumption is correct, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to go ahead and tap that like button down below. Uh, that way YouTube learns that uh, I'm doing a good job here because if YouTube thinks that I'm doing a good job here, it's far more likely to recommend my content to other potential viewers. And that's good for me. It's also good for them. So again, as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of transmission. And powering down. Pew. Goodbye, bird.